Yesterday, I talked about one thing that I was personally struggling with, with wholesale, which was that with wholesale, if you said on Amazon, there's that balance that you need to find in between the amount of items that sell on Amazon and the pallet quantity. So the, the, the units, the number of units that are going to be on the pallet if you order a pallet. The issue is that a lot of those products and a lot of those suppliers are only going to work with you with those products if you order a whole pallet. You can often order less, but it's going to cost you a little bit more, right? But if you do volume, if you order a whole pallet of that item, it's going to be a cheaper for you and the product is going to be more interesting, right? And if you want the whole development, I invite you to watch yesterday's video about the subject. But I think there's one misconception and there's one thing that makes it that a lot of people have a misunderstanding of wholesale. And uh it's something that can cause you to 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 do a lot of bad buys, and this is what I'm going to explain in today's video because I think this is um, this is this is a concept that is hard to grasp at the beginning, but that if you start to grasp to, when you start to grasp, and you should absolutely grasp it when you do um, if you plan to do wholesale, and it's going to help you avoid a lot of bad buys. And once again, if you do not know me, I'm not an expert with wholesale. I'm getting into wholesale right now i'm putting my two feet in right now and so as i said i'll make those updates in my journey every tuesday but in today's video i wanted to talk about it okay and so i'm not an expert if there are things that i say that are wrong regarding wholesale of course come and tell me and if there are things that you think i could improve with my wholesale strategy because i'm documenting my journey with these videos right going through going through transition not transitioning but incorporating way more wholesale if there are things that i do wrong that i that i think about wrong always come in the comments and tell me and we can have this, this, this discussion. But if you do not know me, my name is Chris Mangonza. I release daily videos about selling on Amazon right on YouTube because I've been selling on Amazon, doing retail arbitrage and online arbitrage and actually private labeling first myself on Amazon for a little time. Okay. And so um, I've been teaching people to do it for free and I've paid product as well. You can check them out in the description, right? But in this series of video, what I do is I actually document my, my, my process trying to figure out wholesale so you guys can learn and we can learn at the same time. And if you see these videos in the future, whenever I'm actually successful with wholesale and I'm a $10 billion Amazon seller a year, <laughs> you, you, know, you can go back to these videos and figure out how I actually did it and what my thought process and how my thought process evolved and what worked and what did not work for me. And things may have changed, you know, in the future, but that can help you. And I hope that it will be helpful. So the the the, the big issue, and I'm just, you know what? Let's go straight to the whiteboard. Let's go straight to the whiteboard. So you need to understand one thing. And also, this is the reason why a lot of wholesalers, um, you know, they work with an Amazon seller, they do not work with an Amazon seller. And if you do not understand this, this is the reason why this is the reason why a lot of um, wholesalers are not do not want to open accounts with you right so we need to understand something as an amazon seller you sell on amazon right of course like <laughs> as the name implies and so we need to understand that one specific wholesaler will have a limited and i know there's nothing going on on the screen right now because i'm literally um you know, i'm literally thinking about it and i'm actually explaining it to you guys so we'll get back to the to the whiteboard before but like we need to understand that Let's, and we are going to simplify the number. Let's say that your distributor has 100 different items that they have available in their catalog, right? Amongst these 100 items, there's going to be maybe 10, and 10 is pushing it. But like, let's say, let's assume that there's 10, okay? So you have your distributor, they have 100 items in their catalog, okay? Among these 100 items, they have 10 items that are interesting to sell on Amazon right these are the items that you are going to buy continuously from them as an amazon seller and the thing that you need to understand is that it, to be honest, you need to understand one thing because we need to make a difference in between close house and in between straight stock oh, okay so if you have wholesalers that do straight stock it's stock that is always the same right it's stuff that is always going to be the same and these suppliers will all have, always have the same stock and so you can always buy the same products over and over and this is in this case if we talk about closeout it's going to be a little bit different okay if it's closeouts closeouts think about it as and if you've watched my content on online arbitrage think about closeouts as um clearance 
for for uh, as clearance if if you buy online okay so for example if you buy on if you buy on i don't know on on macy's you buy shoes on clearance these shoes you're not you're never going to be able to buy these shoes at this price again and maybe that they are being discontinued whatever you are getting a super cheap price and it's not something that you're going to be able to buy over and over again right and uh whenever it goes on sale it's just a one-time sale and it's never going to be that good again they're just getting rid of their stock right and usually when something is on clearance it's just one time right so this is the thing that you need to understand so we are talking specifically about straight stock and not um and not closeouts all right but yeah so the, you you're working with a straight stock distributor and so there's those 10 items that you're gonna buy over and over again from them to sell on amazon okay the thing that you need to understand is that so you need to understand that the size of the pie is fixed so these 10 items this is the size of the pie these 10 items and by the way i should have told you because like yeah this is this is actually a reply to a comment that that, that came from tyson who said hi chris maybe consider splitting the pilots among some like-minded friends okay and sorry by the way shout out to you uh, shout out to you tyson because i'm actually replying to this and i should have said it before and i just realized i just realized that i didn't you know I just realized that I didn't. So yeah, it's a, it's to answer a specific comment. So Tyson, shout out to you, by the way. Um, so yeah, so you need to understand that. <clears throat> Those 10 items, the size of the pie is going to be, let's say that, you know, these 10 items in total, they send, they each sell 100 units a month on Amazon. So in total, you can sell, you, you know, like these 10, let's assume that every single one of these units, you buy them for $1. And so it's 10, you're, you're going to buy the sizes, 10x so you do 10x this because you're gonna buy 10 item every single day for every single one of the 10 units every single day for uh, every single month for these 10 items and so the size of the pie will be this okay so if you buy them all at one dollar the size of the pie so the, the pie will be 100 dollars and once again we choose simple numbers to make it easy to, to make it easy to guys all right so it's not that hard to max out the amount of inventory you can actually buy from this whole seller, you know, and like, like you, you can do it by yourself, right? So you, you can spend $100 a month with this supplier and there's just no way that you're going to be able to buy more because, you know, like it's, you're just not going to be able to, to, to buy more. The reason why is because, you know, like you're not going to be able to sell more than 100 units a month. Okay, and so this is once you are maxed out with this supplier, the only thing that you can do is potentially look into other other items that that they have in their catalog and sell these, try to list these items on Amazon and try to make them profitable. And so there's a common ground over there where they need to provide the items cheap enough for you to be able to make money so you can purchase these items over and over again from them right and this is this is pretty much the, the agreement that you that you have with them and you're going to be able to buy this item over and over again all right so that's the that, so that's the first that's, that's the first thing that you need to understand now as i said you know the the issue is that and this is the thing that you need to understand the issue is that let's assume that you know Pallet quantity on these 10 items, you know, you want to buy, you, you want to buy 10 a month. And so, you know, you can spend $100 um, a month. So there's a fine line. Um, the, 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 the big challenge is this is, you know, let's say that pallet quantity for this. So you're going to buy 100 units a month. Pallet quantity for this, let's say a pallet is 200 units. Okay. So it means that if you buy a pallet, you're going to buy two months of inventory which is not too bad and this will work in that case you know because you're going to have you're going to instead of spending 100 dollars a month you're going to spend 200 dollars every two months all right and this is how you're going to be able to make it work no the issue is if pallet quantity instead of being 200 pallet quantity is 1000 right so it means that every single time you're going to buy the pallet you are going to buy 10 months of inventory so uh you know instead of buying so you're going to spend one thousand dollars and so your one thousand dollars is going to get st be stuck for one for one whole year right and so this th this is when it becomes an issue and this is what is actually tricky with wholesale because the suggestion to actually work with friends and split an order will not work in this case because at the end of the day you know, let's say that it's it's selling one 100 times a month anyway, right? 
And so whether you whether you buy 1000 units by yourself or you and your friend each buy 500 units is not going to change anything because it's still going to take the same amount of time to sell because you bring another competitor to the listing, right? The only place where it actually makes sense to do group buys is in the case, you know, because this is <laughs> In that case, you know, you can spend the money by yourself. So it's not that big of a deal. Now, when it becomes tricky, it's when, I mean, when it becomes tricky, when it, it is actually interesting to do, um, it is interesting to do a group buy if, you know, the, the whole size of the pie, instead of being $100, <coughs> let's say the whole size of the pie is $100,000. Okay, the pie is way bigger. Yes, of course, scales are not right. It's 100 k Okay, if the whole size of the pie is 100k, here we go. No, since we do not have as much capital and do not want to expose yourself that much, and you have other plans, other other places to invest, what you can say is, hey, you bring five friends and you say, hey, the whole pie is 100,000. Let's divide the pie in five. Let's each input. Let's each put twenty thousand dollars a month into this inventory. Let's split it this way and let's each get a piece of the pie so that way we can make you know that way we can make the, the supplier happy and what you will notice is that most of the time these suppliers will have higher minimum order quantity you know because they have better prices better product but you need to order more right and these are going to be good spread. and like you're going to split that pie in, and i'm not going to be able to actually yeah i might be able here we go and you're going to split that pie in five yes those five parts are not equal but just to get an idea you do not necessarily need to to split them equal so this is the exact reason why suppliers for a supplier, if a supplier already has an Amazon seller that is buying this whole pie from him, he has no reason to actually onboard a new Amazon seller client because this pie, because if the, the old, if they're all, if their old client, which was an Amazon seller buys all this already, and then they add another Amazon seller that is going to buy all this already. You need to understand at the end of the day by getting a new client this this wholesale supplier is not going to get more money because they are going to sell the same stock to two sellers the, the the volume the volume at which it is selling on amazon is not increasing okay it's staying the same and so what is going to end up happening is that the, like these two sellers are going to buy less and less because they're not going to be able to sell as fast as they used to right and because of that because of that what is going to happen is that you know at the end of the day the supplier is not going to make more money they're going to make less and less money and then the sellers are going to get pissed the sellers are not going to purchase from the supplier anymore and that's the end of the relationship and this is why exactly it's exactly why this is the thing that you need to understand you need to understand why wholesalers don't want to open an account with you and this is the same reason why group buys may not make sense all the time group buys make sense if the buy is big if the buy is small anyway Splitting the process is not going to change anything. This is the main thing that you need to understand. Uh, and this is the whole thought process. And I think this is the whole thought process. If you want to make good buy the wholesale, this is all you need to think about it, right? Um, and this is why, if you actually want to split a pallet, the reason why, and this is why I always say, you know, uh, I always say, this is why I said, um, this is why I said in the past, uh, in previous videos, that uh, especially on my videos when i came back from ast networking is just it's not just networking with the competition okay networking is networking with people that can potentially that, that with with whom you can actually have um complementary complementary goals right because for example let's say and this is a this is an hypothetic example but let's say that you are a big amazon seller okay you start you start networking with moms and shops moms and pop shops uh with walmart seller with ebay sellers this is where you know because you need to understand that if you network with too many people and you start to work with too many people that are your direct competitor at one point you're going to cannibalize yourself right and so this is why like you need to you need to understand that you need to network with people that are going to be able to complement what you do and so that way if you actually do a group buy with somebody that is doing walmart if you do not sell what on walmart yourself but let's say and let's assume and there are, there may not be a lot of but this is why the example of a mom of, of a small mom and pop shop was actually making more sense let's take it this way 
if you work with a small mom and pop shop, okay, and then you actually do a purchase order together with stuff exclusively with stuff that you can sell on Amazon stuff that they can sell in their store, you complement each other because no, if you buy a whole palette, like a whole palette, you know that you can sell, I don't know, like 300 a month on Amazon, they can sell 400 a month in their store, they assume that they can do that. That's a perfect match. Then you can place an order together. You're not going to cannibalize yourself and it's going to make a lot of sense, okay? In that case, if the pie is if the pie is smaller, no, if the pie is big, of course you can divide it and do a group buy with other Amazon sellers. But like there's a small, there's a fine, there's a balance that needs to be found, okay? At, at one point you need to understand that Yes, you have your group, you work with your group, but you're not going to work with everyone, you're not going to network with everybody, you know? Because at one point, you start to cannibalize yourself. And this is the main thing that I want you to understand, and especially with this. And you need, this is, this is the, the and it does not mean that you should absolutely not network and you should see everybody as competition. No, you should absolutely network with people in your industry that do the same thing as you. But it's not the whole networking that, you're, that, that you need to do. You need to be more creative with your networking and see with other people, or you can actually work with other people. And I think this is where it makes a lot of sense. You know, and so, um, yeah, that's the whole point that I wanted to make with this video. And this is why, you know, also, I'll make a whole video about it. But this is why, you know, if the brand is like, if you are in that, in, in this case, and you're already maxing out your supplier, and I'm going to make it short. The only risk that you have is people working with another supplier that brings more competition to this, to this, to this, um, to this, to the to this buy right that to this specific market and so this is why the next step is going brand direct because if you go brand direct you can 100 avoid people coming from other suppliers that are right right and this is why it should eventually down the line be the goal okay work directly with the brand but you need to understand that it's the same thing if you want to work directly with the brand you need to have a deep pocket okay because you're going to say hey for everything that sells on amazon i'm going to be the wire buying from you i'll take care of that account for you but you need to have deeper pocket and it's always about having deeper pocket to actually be able to meet that and oh can you have deeper pocket it's actually with by like, networking with other, uh, other people that sell on amazon maybe and start distributing to them as well you know doing group buys this way and uh, it's on another level but you get the idea this is um this is oh this is i would this is oh i think about it so far let me know if i'm wrong on anything um let me know if i'm wrong on anything maybe i should actually get a mentor for wholesale um and bounce these ideas back to them you know what if you watch until here let me know if you know any mentor for wholesale because i absolutely need to get one and um yeah yeah just let me know i'll see you later okay thank you for watching